the first thing about the stick is the technique of playing it. And uh, you can just take one finger, play one string at one fret, and get a note. So that might seem very mechanical, but you can do vibrato. You can do uh, all kinds of finger effects. So then you can play with your other hand on the bass strings and you can play a note and it sustains a long time and it's also percussive. So you can drum your fingers on it. So it's a long sustain of strings and it's percussive. Uh, so that gives you a wide palette to paint your music from. So it's, it's orchestral, it's bass, chords, melody, and chords. So it's easy to play physically. Um, mentally, it's not so easy to play. Uh, because you have to think like a keyboardist and beyond because you need expression. You're not just throwing hammers like on a piano. Uh, you're, you're interacting with the string. Okay, so the technique is everything. And so then I built a minimal instrument. Uh, one without a body that just was a long wide fretboard with 25 frets, 10 strings, later on 12 strings and 8 strings. The, the standard one is 10 strings. And the pickup built right into the body of the instrument with a little module that uh, slides in from the side. And uh, you disengage it by undoing two screws and pulling it out and then you can exchange modules. And there's a truss rod back here and um, a little truss nut to adjust and tighten the truss. The truss is on the flush with the rear side so it acts like a cable, so it's very effective. And the finest adjustment will straighten the board. And then uh, there's a lot of patented things packed into this very minimalistic instrument like the fret rails that are stainless steel diamond shaped uh, bars and um, the nut that I call uh, the flaps that raises and rocks by adjustment to get the uh, string clearances very close to the first fret and the bridge that is um, adjustable in three dimensions for height and for distance to get proper true octaves and intonation and also slightly from side to side in order to uh, to give you the string spacing. So everything is adjustable that can be adjustable including the pickup block itself which sits on these four set screws that are height adjustable. And then when you put it on um, this belt, this strap, shoulder strap, is also adjustable. And I have it set for about 30 degrees. So the hands are comfortable just playing on it. And so when the action is set really low for this technique, the lower the better. The lighter the touch, the better. You, you can just touch, touch the strings down to the frets, like that. Or you can play it hard. got quite a bit of dynamic variation. We have our favorite stick tunings and they're in fifths in the bass, fourths in the melody. The melody is like a guitar, but a guitar is tuned like this. But across any fret, they're uniform fourths. And if you detune these highest two melody strings, you'd have a guitar tuning relationship. You have a low note at the bass in the middle, interior low note, and on the melody side. 
and they go out. They go up in fourths here, and they go up in fifths here. And then, so this middle portion is sort of like a wider space for the two groups of strings, and it's sort of the breach. That's a, like a, a tenth apart. But they stack up like this. So that's called matched reciprocal tuning. So that means if you're playing, say, a nice place to play is three frets apart. You get all your fingering in that way. So there's unison lies. In that case, I say left hand, play with the right hand is playing. And of course, you could do that in like. So then the left hand has a song arrangement. The right hand picks out the notes like a child would play on the white keys of a piano. And the beauty of the uniform tuning is. have the same patterns. At first it was like, ooh, what a great thing. I have a ninth chord, now I'll add on a thirteenth. I'll, I'll add on another fourth on the melody string. And I say, hmm, I can't really stretch that string that high, so I have to detune all the other strings. So I kept adding high strings and, and then realizing I couldn't stretch a high string that far. But I didn't care what key I played in, because this is a fretboard instrument. Uh, for me, it was a whole keyless concept from the beginning, any key, and that's how the stick is. There are, there are no open strings, so there's no favorite keys. So I would detune the guitar at a high string, and I did that three or four times, and pretty soon the um, major third that's the common between the, the, the G and the B string, it kept getting lower and lower in the sequence until it finally got down around this place. And then I flipped my bass strings. I said, okay, I got nine strings. It's hard to reach bass and chords. I want my bass to be in the middle. So I took the, um, the low E and I raised it an octave. And then the, the next string, the A string, I left it alone. And then the D string, the next higher string, I lowered it an octave and I had fifths. Leave the A string alone and take the lowest guitar string, raise it an octave, the third lowest guitar string, lower it an octave, and I had fifths. Okay, so that wasn't enough. I added another fifth above that and another fifth below it, and I finally got to a stick-like tuning. My nine-string guitar wasn't a stick yet because I hadn't come up with the technique. The two-handed tapping technique, I discovered that in September, in August 1969. And before that, I already had my tune, my guitar tuned with the flipped bass strings. And the idea was to try to play a bass line, play a melody line, and chords all at the same time. And I was listening to Oscar Peterson, McCoy Tyner, Bill Evans, uh, but I was also listening to Jimi Hendrix and John Coltrane. And I didn't want to compromise with the melody. I wanted it to be as free as I could. So when I discovered by placing my hand down in August 1969 and, and doing this while I played uh, chords against So that's one of the first things I did. And it was like so fast and so articulate. And it was like total change of character. It was like playing familiar guitar chords with my left hand, but not plucking them. And then just drumming my right hand over it. 